What's up, y'all? In this video, we are going to be taking apart a Larson. Uh, you can call it a number of things. Bar door, security door, screen door. A door that you put on the outside of your door so that you can open your actual door to your house and have like a, you know, be able to see out. These are really popular nowadays with the box stores. That's pretty much all they sell is like the Larson styles of locks and doors. Box stores go through kind of a generational shift every like 10 years or so where they, you know, flip or manufacturers change things. So for the time being, the Larson is one of the more popular box store styles of locks, doors, whatever you want to call them. And uh, this is a keyed lock. It's a little deadbolt. You know, it's really just kind of a what I would consider a privacy lock because the bolt only comes out just a little bit. It's thin, weak metal, no real security, and we have a wafer, wafer cylinder lock. Now, this customer wants it rekeyed to, he already has a door and he's adding another couple of doors, and he wants it rekeyed to the key he already has. With traditional locks on doors, you have what's called like this universal pin kit. And this type of rekey kit allows locksmiths to rekey door locks like doorknobs and deadbolts, like you see right here, all to the same key because this the pins are all standardized. There's a standard uh, diameter. So you can take these pins and there's different lengths, match up the key with the different lengths. That's how you rekey a regular lock. But with wafer kits, there's no real standard. Everybody and their brother has different styles of wafers. It all started back basically kind of in the automotive world or with uh, desk locks, stuff like that. There's so many different manufacturers of wafer locks, and there's so many generic styles. They all have certain little ridges, and we're going to take it apart and look at it. They all have certain shapes and little different uh, characteristics of the wafers that they use and that creates the problem when you take these apart to rekey them is because you cannot source or you, you don't have a universal wafer uh, to be able to stick in there because everybody's is different so anyway let's take it apart and see what we can do to make the customer's key fit these new locks. Okay, the hardest part of all this is always cutting it open. With blister packs, I kind of go around and uh, leave the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top off here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna peel it backwards. Hopefully leave those handles in there. go hey so with wafer locks we have kind of a uh, one through four we got depth one through four uh just generically calling it that and maybe one through five for certain manufacturers but we, we usually can go by one through four and there's usually four five spaces so we have one two three four i think this is going to be a zero up here or a no cut. So that's probably one, four, three, four, four, one, four, three, four, four. And to get it apart, it's pretty easy to do. We're gonna stick our key in to hold the wafers in because in many wafer locks, when you drop it out, they, they fall out. Sometimes they're peened in and they, they hold in, but sometimes they're not. So let's go ahead and just push Push this clip in, it's just a spring-loaded clip. So we're gonna push that in and may have to be turned a certain way to come out. Oh, there we go. And we're just gonna, okay, just like that. All right, so number one, let's hold it over this. And we are gonna pull the key out to see if they freely come out. And that's what happens when you put the correct key in. The wafers are all sticking up. That's keeping it from turning. Put the key in, and they all level out on both sides. And that allows it to turn. Uh, as we're taking this out, we're seeing if they 
fall out naturally. They don't. So the first thing we're going to do is just see if we can leave some of the wafers. Some of them might match up so we don't have to remove them. And that is the case with number three and five. All the rest of them get to come out. And if we hold the keys up to each other, so basically we're going to be looking at this key. And we have uh, we gauge this. It's either going to be a one or a two. So we're just going to say one. Looks like maybe four, three, three, one, four. Four, three, three, one, four. And the key here is one, four, three, four, four. So one, four, three, four, four. Uh, so it looks like that is correct because we have the two that we're leaving. So what we can do is this was the new, old. So we need to change these around. And it looks like we can take this four and put in that first slot. And then we can take that one and put, so we can switch one and four. Yay. Uh, now doing this is kind of ticky. It really depends on how well they're peened in. So what we're doing, we need to take out one, two, and four. So sometimes you can just push it. They make a deal called a wafer popper that pops that out. And I've actually got a version of that in my truck, but most people don't have that. So I just get a screwdriver like so. Kind of hold it. It's a little awkward to do this and you always end up kind of jabbing your hand, but I'm gonna take a little hammer, and screwdriver, and I'm just kind of holding it like that. I'm gonna hit it, get it to pop out. And uh, I'm kind of holding it so that they go not through my fingers, but into my hand. Okay, there we go. I think I felt them come out. Sometimes you can come in here and lift too. Yep, there we go. So that was the second wafer. There's the first wafer. And we need to drop, we don't, if you can leave the springs, it's a good idea to do, but we, I'm just gonna hold it real carefully. Come on, okay, let's drop the springs. Drop the springs out so we don't lose them. And uh, this fourth one does not want to come out easily, so I'm going to give it a tap. All right, so we knew that we could switch one and four, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Carefully put the springs back in. So this was our four. Now with wafers... It's, uh, if you can see, this is a four and a four, and you can see the one. You can see how the one has kind of a narrower, if you're gauging it this way, that's wider than that is. So we know that these are the four wafers. Uh, it looks like our screwdriver did a little kind of funky damage there, so I'm gonna put this on a brush. brush it off a little bit so that it's a little bit smooth and our springs fell out let's put those back in there all right so we're gonna put the four in the one spot hey and the one in the four spot hey just like that I'm going to drop this one way for our spring back out just because we still have to deal with no wafer in that spot. So boop, boop. 
check it again. Yep, that's good. So now what we need is a number three wafer. That is not that. So in the locksmith world, there are a number of pen and kits, manufacturer specific pen and kits, wafer pen and kits that you can buy. Uh, and we have them somewhere. Let me go find them. I personally have three different versions, four different versions, but my other one's in the truck. I'm not going to go get it. This is the Fort Lock. This is the All Lock, which uh, these, these two probably are not available anymore. I haven't looked for them in a while, but most likely are not. And uh, this one actually had two different styles of wafers in it. If anything was going to be a generic pen and kit, it would have been that one. And then you have this National Cabinet Lock. Uh, now, this is the Master Wafer Kit. I believe I've done a video on this. And uh, the difference between that is the wafers, instead of having the smooth bottom, just like just like, like that. See how, see how it's different? You can see the difference in the two. And the reason why is because instead of it just going straight across, which the non-master key vit version of the national kit has them that go straight across, but since this is a master key, it really depends on where the key goes through. So holding it like this, if you were to master key it, so when your key goes in, you see how this blade is on this side, the right-hand side of the key? and it interacts with the deeper cut. But if you've got a master key, the blade's on the other side. So when you take that out and put the master key in, it interacts with that side. So that's how the master key works. You could cut this one way and it interacts with this side of the wafer over here. And then the user key would interact with that side. That's how the master wafer works. You can use it, it really doesn't matter because it's still just interacting with the one side. So with the master key, we were looking for a number three. I pulled this out of here, I believe, 62. The first number is the master, the second number is the change on this particular kit. So we are looking for a three, which three is actually a number four. So we need it on the change side. So we're looking for a number four on this side. We can use this one right here, two to four. Uh, now it comes into play as to where, get out of the way, where the cut is, where this little notch is on the side. And we see it's up here and also you see this part's too long. So let's take a look at the Fort version. Fort version, tumbler number four. It has six spaces. So, or six depths. So what is one depth on one may not be the same depth on uh, the one that we're using. Well, let's hold it up. Four, we're gonna put it right on top of that. That is, definitely close Let's sit back in and it's definitely pretty close but it looks like we could actually go if, if we were to use this it looks like uh oh yeah we're doing a number three so let's see let's see how number three stacks up Uh, the little divots in the right spot on this one, so that's good. And it looks like that'll work, but this is a little bit long, and we notice that these are a little bit more kind of rounded up. Let's go ahead and use a number four for this. Uh, but I will take out, just to show you, the all lock as well. Dupe. Get out our number three right here. Toot. 
and we'll take a look at it. Uh, with this one, we see the big difference. Let's move all up. Nope, Fort National Original All Locks. All Locks, this version, this, this particular wafer has this large kind of side notch. That is not going to work. And if we look at the service kit, we'll see that was those, the A, AC wafer. And then the C wafer does have a little notch, but unfortunately, I don't have many of those in here, but here's one. Is that the number three? Yeah. And that looks really, really close to to what we have. The top of it's a little bit taller. The, uh, the little doodad there is right. So what we could do is we could we can we can try this one, or we could try this one and kind of take off that tip. But let's try see what happens if we try the C wafer out of any of the kits. The all lock one that I have right there it would be considered the most generic one. Focus. Thank you. Boom. Oh, okay. Hey, that one works. So that is uh, able to be used. It jumps up and down like it's supposed to. A lot of people, if we didn't have that, would have just normally left that wafer out. I hate leaving a wafer out. Uh, or pins out of locks, period. In this case, it was only one, so we would have been kind of lucky if our numbering would have been different, if this would have been, you know, one, one, two, three, one, we may have had more empty chambers. But we also could have taken, uh, and again, the only kit that I know of that's still sold is the national version. I may be incorrect in that. They may still have this somewhere. So if we would have needed to use that, we could have taken this. We could have taken a file and kind of filed down that a little bit, and it it may have worked. It's a good idea to have that national. National is one of the more common. You don't necessarily need the master key version because there is a small kit, just about a little bit bigger than this, that has just one through four wafers. Really, that's all you need. It's very rare to be called in to do a master key on a wafer locks. It happens, but it's not happening in this case. So uh, it's just a good idea to, to at least have some wafers that you could possibly modify. We could probably make that work just by uh, kind of filing the tip down. And uh, yeah, so there we go. That's it on uh, wafer cam lock key. I'm sure if you were watching this as a homeowner, you would have just left that wafer out. Because again, this is not really that big of a security gate in as more of a, like a privacy style situation. It wouldn't hurt to leave one wafer out. I know, I know a lot of people are going to cringe about that, but if you had to, if you were doing this on your own. That's probably what would have happened. So anyway, that's it. Can be done. Sometimes not so great, but if you have your wafer pinning kits uh, to be able to go through and try to see, you know, hey, maybe this one will work, maybe this one will work. And uh, hopefully you can find one that will. They're awful proud of that. It's a patented five-sided spindle, so it will only work with our stuff. <laughs> anyway, that goes over the Larson wafer lock repinning, re-wafering procedure. Hopefully, if you are tasked to do this and you're not a locksmith, 
you're able to just switch your wafers around and be done with it. Uh, if you are a locksmith, then hopefully you would have uh, one or two little wafer pinning kits that you could possibly modify some of the wafers on to make work. Doesn't usually take a lot, just a little swipe of a file to knock the point down on the edge uh, as long as, you know, things are the same. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments on this or, or anything else, post them in the comment section. We'll catch you next video.